method is locking it in? I think it's mainly a denial. Even though Nijaki has played a lot of Orianna and they could have went for it, plus you have that kind of natural synergy with the Jarvan Orianna, the biggest benefit it has is CLG doesn't get it. Because when you were already looking at the preemptive protect the double of composition, it was getting real scary. And taking away Orianna makes it much different, and it's actually probably going to push these last two picks for CLG into a more carry style from the mid lane. And there's a big fat carry in the form of Gragas, actually. <laughs> we'll see how well Link is going to be playing with that big man in the mid lane if he does decide to go there. Curse, they did lock in the Twitch as well. And I, the reason I want to highlight that is Cop's performance on Twitch last week was particularly impressive. He was very aggressive. Yes. He was actually stealthing up and looking to start fights multiple times throughout the course of the week. And he could even, if he got really bold, have an Oriana ball on top of him and really start some <laughs> fights with Twitch. I don't think that's gonna Super happen. Super sneaky. Ooh, I like the last pick here by Curse. Boy Boy had free reign over what he was gonna pick here, especially if he's gonna get a 1v1 lane against Nian. And he's decided to go with Zac, who can out-sustain Shen in those lanes and really just farm up a storm. It creates a very powerful front line for Curse, which, in my opinion, when Curse runs two tanks, they're way more successful than when they have Voiboy on a like true assassin carry champion, at least recently. Because when Voiboy played assassins, he played them as tanks and it would work out really well. So I love that they have the Zac. I wonder if they're going to jungle him, though. This is getting confusing. In terms of the compositions, what we are seeing from both of them, though, is clear initiation from both mm -hmm. of the teams. Jarv and Zach going to throw themselves in with Orianna Ball on top over for CLG. Big Fat LP and Nintonso are going to be throwing themselves in with the Shen Nocturne combo, which we've seen time and time again. And it's just a matter of which team's going to get better positioning. And even though we got a couple seconds going down here, they did swap back. It's not Jarv in top lane. It is Zach in the jungle. So it is the Zach we expected from Boy Boy to give that tanky initiation. St. Vish is going to be on his signature job in the fourth. It's mm -hmm. something that he's playing extremely often. And he's actually got the second uh, highest KDA in the league right now. Uh, second highest death, sorry. And the second lowest Slight KDA. Slight difference yes, in yes. those stats. I got, I got them backwards. <laughs> but so he's okay. He's not Saint's performing. having an off year. Yeah. Saint is definitely having an off split. And he needs to bring back his all-star level potential that he had in the spring split. And that's... One of the things that, that happens when a team struggles, we hear Medios talk about his KDA, and he says, I have a good KDA because my team is good. And if your team is good, your jungler doesn't die that much. Especially when your jungler is oftentimes one of the main initiators for exactly. your team. Talking about the teams, you can see them on your screen. We are jumping into the matchup. It is CLG on the left-hand side, Curse on the right-hand side. I think score record is one-to-one -one between these two teams. And this game is extremely important as both of these teams are sitting nice and neatly in the middle of the pack. It has so many implications towards these playoffs. You think that either of these teams, if they have a poor end of the season, would jump into the seventh spot. But if they have a good end of the season, they could be near the top of the standings in third place or so. so and they are just charging each other, despite neither team having hard initiation. Oh, the taunt has caught out Jackie. The Aqua Prison locks Chousta up, though, a flash in return. But they got the summoner spell at the very least. That could be great for CLG right there, since if you think about it, Nian just walked up and taunted Nijaki. That was a huge misplay by Curse being that close. I think Curse was hoping to land a bubble outside of the taunt range and then capitalize off of that. But essentially the taunt is a close to guaranteed crowd control at the start of the game there. And Curse should not have been dancing in that spot. It caught all of us by surprise. We didn't yeah. expect it's like that. like, there's not going to jump. Oh, my. Exactly. So early aggression from CLG does pay off. They get that summoner spell burned. Big Fat LP, a jungler known for spending much of his free time in the lane. If he decides to pay Nijaki a visit, that could work out well for Council Logic Gaming. And I really wonder here if CLG is going to try 2v2 laning phases or the 1v2 laning phases. And... This is going to sound a little weird again, but when COG goes to 1v2 lanes, they turn them into 2v2 lanes because Big Fat LP will babysit Nian and they will make a 2-1-2 setup with their team overall and try to keep the turrets up as long as possible. In COG games, kind of a metric for how successful they're being in the early game is when does the first tower fall? Because if the first tower doesn't fall for a while, COG sitting pretty. We'll see how long they can defend that first tower as both teams just going to start off in the respective jungles. Ricky Fat LP on his red buff while Sun Fishes is picking up his blue. See a number of wards littered across the jungle. So both teams well aware of what their opponents are doing. And your question has been answered. It is a 1 1 2 lane right now. Standard lanes, and this is most likely in favor of CLG. Double lift doesn't 
really respect other lane opponents because if you think about the Nami Twitch lane, that's not a good lane for Vayne Lulu. Yet COG's decided to go up in that lane and not try any lane swaps. So we'll need to pay attention to that bottom lane to see if Doublelift can outplay Coffin Edward. And while that's happening, Link in the mid lane forced to chug through all of those potions because Nijaki has already burned his Ignite and put a lot of damage down onto Link. So there are no summoner spells for Nijaki. Yeah, Jackie figured if he had his flash down, he may as well Ignite too. Not to mention, Orianna doesn't really go for kills early, and he has that Ignite Mastery spec, so it's gonna improve his last hitting because of the 5 AD that he gets off at early Ignite. And unless they're going for a kill, like they might right here, it's not gonna be detrimental to his lane play. St. Fishes tries to get the knockup in place, but doesn't manage to land it. Instead, you can just see Link walking away from that one. In the bottom lane, Chalster and Double Lift playing very aggressively in this lane. They've pink watered up the river, and they're keeping Cop and Edward against their own turret. And the other reason they're able to stay this far up in the lane is because of the ward COG's placed in Curse's blue side of the jungle. So anywhere St. Fishes were to approach from, COG should hopefully be able to go back. And with that confidence we're talking about from the COG bottom lane, they are not afraid of those Nami bubbles and don't expect to get hit by one. An immense amount of damage and pressure has been placed onto Cop. He's falling behind as far as CS is concerned, but he does have a lot of minions in front of him as we just mm -hmm. catch a glimpse of Bigfoot LP roaming around to this mid lane. This is his usual habitat as far as Big Fat is concerned in the jungle. It gets knocked up in the air, instantly flashes away, and St. Vish is just at the right place at the right time. Bit of a lazy play there by Big Fat LP. He wasn't threatening anyone when doing that, and he just allowed St. Fishes to make a play on him. So that gives St. Fishes a bit of an edge. Since they know how low they got Big Fat LP in that last gank, it allows all the cursed lanes to play with impunity for a while. So we'll see how much time they have to play with before Big Fat LP is able to return. Currently level three, and when that Paranoid does become available. It is a scary, scary prospect to deal with. Chowster in the bottom lane, however, took a lot of damage from that auto attack expunge combo of comp. COG has the defensive summoners in this lane, whereas Curse has the offensive summoners in the lane as well. Chowster went with Exhaust. Edwards went with Ignite. Kill secure, man. Kill secure for Edward, and it also means that the ganking potential for Curse is higher than the ganking potential for COG. Farm lane for COG kill lane for Curse, which is actually playing out kind of like it should right now. Curse is falling a little bit too far behind in farm. Lane. We'll see how well they can close out the gap. As you see, just a glimpse of St. Vicious on your screen. He was looking to maybe alleviate some of the pressure that was being applied by Double F and Chalster, but in the end, decides to just back off and spend some of that money. Boy Boy gets some vision down in the top lane, and he's trading off against Nian. This lane's going to be a little bit slow. These are two... Close to resourceless tanks. Let's be fair, Shen does have energy, technically, and neither of them have any burst damage whatsoever. So the only kills we're going to see in this lane are if they get really bored and decide to brawl <laughs> each other, or if we see two to three man tower dives. For the most part, this is about that lane is all about denying and farming with each other, and then once Nian hits six, denying him from teleporting to other lanes. I distinctly hope we ask one of them a question like that on one of my interview couches. Were you bored in that 1v1? Is that why you fought? Down in the bottom lane, though, there's no one bored as Chalster gets caught up. The bubble throws him up in the air, but nobody else from Curse carries and chasing. No vision, didn't want to overextend. Yeah, that's always those weird situations where you think you landed the crowd control out of vision, and you don't know if Big Fat LP is actually waiting in the wings with a Nocturne. Plus, even if they would have chased, they knew Chester had all his summoner spells off, and there was a lot of farm in the lane that Cop wanted to pick up. You can see he's already back to 33 to 39, pushing that wave a little bit up, and he needed to get that farm to even stay competitive with Double of CS. I'm talking about Double of CS. He's already spent some of that money, picked himself up a Vamp Scepter, as well as that potion and returned back to lane. It has been mirrored by Cop on the other side, so at least there's no item deficit between the two AD carries. I gotta say, though, Vamp Scepter is the money item for a vein. Because Tumble enhances her AD, essentially Vayne life steals for more than Twitch does in lane, and Double it may be able to use that to win extended trades later in the fights. Talking about extended trades, boredom has yeah. struck in Tonso and Let's Boy Boy, him. trading back and forth and basically just hammering away. And if somebody does go lower, they are at risk. But right now, Big Fat LP only level four. He's a level behind St. Vicious' Jarvan, and you could attest that to that mid lane failed gank. I think that's exactly what happened with the ganks between Big Fat LP and St. Vicious. I actually feel like Big Fat LP is a little lost as to what to do right now because normally his early game is spent babysitting the one-man lane and kind of taking farm there. But once he's in the jungle in a standard lane setup, 
We know that Big Fat OP actually says jungling in the LCS is easier than jungling in solo queue because solo queue generally has these lane setups. This is not the jungle game that Big Fat OP is used to playing. This is also not the mindset when you come into an LCS game. You don't no. tend to expect this. So maybe a little bit uncomfortable. He will be hitting level six very, very shortly. And that quasi global presence of his paranoia cannot be discounted, especially if you combo in the burst damage that can come down from Lynx Gragas in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. He's currently only sitting on that Doran's uh, ring, but if he does get a full double barrel explosion on his opponent, it could be enough to burst Nijaki out. The potential roam from CLG, even now or once Big Fat OP hits level six is very high. Gragas, when he's played optimally, is a little bit of a roaming assassin, almost akin to a Kassadin, who will try to go either bottom lane or top lane and make plays happen there. And since they have the Shen plus Nocturne, it's potential five-man party in the bottom lane whenever CLG wants. So Curse has got to be ready for that moment. All right, now the CS is falling a little bit in favor of Nijak in the middle lane. In the bottom lane, it is, of course, in favor of Double If, thanks to all of that early pressure. Wow. We haven't seen many ganks, though. So this has basically just been, you know, a solo farming for Double If. Yeah, and that's a big lead he's starting to accumulate with Cobb. This isn't going to really show itself until Double If goes back and either gets his Bilgewater Cutlass or Blade of the Ruined King. That's the power spike that Bane waits for, and then they just go for it. Whether or not ganks impact that lane before it gets to that point, we have to see. But if it keeps going like this, Double If will pull ahead by a large margin. He currently is doing very well for himself. We do see the command shockwave is blown for Nijaki in that mid lane, and Link is bursted very low as far as his HP is concerned. So maybe just trading that ultimate, and as I was talking about, Link maybe trying to make an aggressive play. It's actually Nijaki that yeah. uses that ultimate. And the game looks a little confusing right now because we see only a 200 gold difference on the top bar, but then you see double lift is destroying in minion kills in the bot lane. So you're thinking, how is this gold really close? It's actually St. Fishes and Nijaki who are out farming their respective roles as well. We haven't paid much attention to it, but Jackie's Orianna versus Lynx Gragas in that mid lane has been quite one-sided for Nijaki thus far. We'll see if the power players for both respective teams can actually make the first kill happen or the first engagement as we are hitting, getting close to 10 minutes. Something that we do tend to see in terms of the LCS is this Dragon's you start thinking about them in the 10 to 15 minute mark. This is when people start poising themselves. We just caught a glimpse of Edward for a second, and he's actually maxing his ebb and flow, his W first, over everything else. One of the things is because they're playing so defensive in the lane that he's just trying to heal up rather than go aggressive like you would with a max E build. And these are those potential five-man party that COG is trying to set up. They had Pink Ward the brush down there and then cleared it out, which just gave the tip off to Curse to get out of there and just allow Doublelift to keep doing his thing. So continue playing passive, continue playing safe. This game is looking already like it could be one that goes very long. If I recall correctly, we were talking about the length of the games in the it's previous good for matchup. COG. COG averages 45 minutes a game this season, which is by far the longest of any other team. And their wins are even longer than that. So this is... The CLG game that they've been waiting for, as long as they don't throw anything away too early, maybe at one of these fights, they're doing this on top of a ward, their best they can get is a 5v4, and Chris has a lot of AoE. Command attack goes in there, there's Vision now down for Nijaki, Tidal Wave gets thrown out, Bigfoot LP is gonna spell shield that one up, St. Vicious picks the first fight, Paranoia throws Bigfoot LP onto Edward, he gets knocked up into the air. Now in the background, Chowster, Bigfoot trying to focus down Cop as St. Vicious has picked up First blood onto double lift. All of that farm is for nothing as Curse just brute force their way in. One more auto attack is going to be enough to secure the kill to Bigfoot LP thanks to the poison. The bubble throws oh. up Jouster. He gets knocked up once again. Command attack finishes it off. Three kills for Curse. Nice shot at the end there by Edward with his bubble, but that fight was all Curse from start to finish. Even with Saint jumping into the Dragon Pit and locking down Big Fat LP, he put enough kill threat on him that the Dragon wasn't even part of that fight. It just was on Curse's team because he started the fight for them, got COG low, and then when the fight actually happened, Curse was superiorly positioned because they got to come in from all angles, and COG was preoccupied with the Dragon throughout that entire thing. So that's why we saw the three for zero. And the pink ward being used in the bottom lane by Chaos, so that could have been used to clear out the vision. It's something that you'll be asking yourself, maybe we should have saved that resource for the Dragon if that was our intended focus. Nevertheless, Curse can take those kills happily spread across their jungler, mid laner, and AD carry. Three assists for Edward couldn't have gone better. Void Boys returned to the top lane. Him and Nien, they didn't even leave. They just kept bashing against one another. Yeah, interestingly enough, Nien did get his shield into the fight, but he didn't arrive there because Void Boy interrupted him with Let's Bounce or the Elastic Slingshot. Both those things can interrupt the Shen coming in, so that's why the Zac is actually quite a good pick against Nien. 
allowing, not allowing Shen to come into any of these fights entirely. All right, Pink Ward goes down in this bottom lane now. So Kirsch trying to get some vision superiority. Oh, CLG getting some vision superiority. Cop with his bilge water cutlass and double attack speed daggers. He's actually equal on items with his lane mm -hmm. opponent, and that's going to be very important, especially now that Saint Vicious is moving in. And that fight was so beneficial for Cop. The one kill and two assists puts him only 300 gold behind double lift, and like you said, equalizing the items, close to equalizing the items. The Berserker Greaves versus the dagger is a nice trade. Gives him the edge and gives him the confidence in this lane. Especially when you consider he can stealth up and get a little bit of a movement speed for a couple of seconds at least up in the top lane. Nian's gonna taunt up Boy Boy. He just gets an insta charge on the slingshot. They continue trading. Unstable Matt is gonna drop his HP a little bit low. There's no ignite available for Nian. So Boy Boy, when he eventually gets bored, can decide to flash away and then just carry on bashing. I mean, this is the most boring fight we've ever seen. Well, they're still going at it. <laughs> they seem to be having a little bit of fun and it just keeps going. Boy Boy's healing up a lot. Ignite is now down in Nian's So Boy Boy's turned this one around. Nian may be thinking is a little overconfident. Boy Boy's gonna carry on chasing. Unstable Matt is not enough to close it out. Nian's does walk away safely. He's gonna wear you down if you're not careful about that guy. The absolute sustain from Boy Boy there, denying Yen off the turret despite being leveled down, is creating a lot of map presence for them, and it's drawing CLG up there with Big Fat LP. Nian didn't even burn the flash here. They might try to turn a kill, though. Just not enough threat. That guy's too big of a blob. Boy Boy sustained, plus those potions, just picking up each of the little bloblets was more than enough to make up all the damage that had been landed. Keep in mind that Nintanso's Ignite is available shortly, so if they want to make a play, it could happen. Right now, though, Curse have grouped up for the Dragon. Curse's Dragon Control has been really smart this game. They didn't go for it when they didn't have the man advantage like COG tried to, and then as soon as COG put two people top lane because Boy Boy had drawn Big Fat LP around there, Curse just went for it safely. They weren't afraid of Link trying to steal it with the barrel because they, they had confidence this time in St. Fish's smite, and they had so many people there, Link didn't even try, they ended up getting it. And just to land that smite, something that he hasn't done quite as consistently as maybe he'd like to throw you know, off the splits. He smited it. Make sure they got it. <laughs> it's one dragon for Curse. Can't but take that away from him. That is what matters. As we take a look at this bottom lane, Edward continues to max that ebb and flow. It's up to rank four right now. So that is the W on Nami. I'd just like to highlight how, how he's playing in it, and it's just basically because of that lane. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, out of the duo lane, or the, the AD carries in the bottom lane, it's Kopp that picks up the Blade of the Rune King first. And I think that's because... It's not because he's up in gold. One thing is he didn't complete his Berserker Greaves, so he got there faster. And because Double if just hasn't shopped in a while. Double if sitting on 780 gold and will most likely go back for it if he gets a chance after this turret and that minion wave. It's going to be enough to at least pick up his Blade of the Rune King, and you kind of have to argue it may be even more effective on a Vayne than on a Twitch, thanks to all the kiting power that she offers in a team fight. In the mid lane, we do see Nijacky. He's got a lot of free time as Link has backed off the farm of this wolf camp. Even though Link has been under pressure, he's keeping up in CS, and that's what matters. And this, like we said 50 minutes ago, the longer the first turret stays up, the better it would be for CLG. And they just finished the bottom, finished the bottom laning phase by pushing that turret through, which is a good pace for CLG. If they hadn't lost that three for zero dragon fight, this game would actually be going exactly as planned. Now they do have a bit of an uphill battle since they let that dragon and three kills go to curse. This is a game that could get very explosive very quickly as all of the carries are getting close to that sort of 10 CS per minute average. Boy Boy has been caught out as double of joins this body. They're going to get that self division pass of Frocked. And I think Boy Boy playing a little too confident in lane. By the way, Vayne rips Zack apart which is why that, that last pick was a little bit more dangerous than Boy Boy, and we didn't get to see it until 16 minutes since that's when we came and saw it. But because Boy Boy is building for the lane there, Spear for Sasha, nothing but health, that's not helping you against percent health, physical, and true damage that Boy Boy is putting out with Ruin King and his Silver Bolt. So that's exactly where Doublelift wants to go after killing the bottom lane turret, and COG is actually playing the turret game right now better than Curse. They picked up at least a second tower of the game. They do have numbers in this mid lane. Nijaki and Saint Vicious trying to put as much damage down as possible. Saint Vicious gets knocked backwards. Cop is alone in the bottom lane as well. And now Big Fat LP is going to get close to Paranoia range in just a moment. We'll see if they go in. Come on, Protect gets thrown down into Nijaki. And they decide to back away. But two towers to zero. Cop was unable to get that tower. Yeah, that was a good defense there by Link. He blew all his spells just for the minion wave, and then COG didn't want to collapse in behind from the fight because they're actually okay just extending this game. We'll see how well the game goes, at least if Curse are forced into this late game position. It's like we was mentioning, with all the farm that's happening, 
His players are actually farming their way to big items. And we asked, what's the most improved play of your game from watching LCS? And this is it. Mechanics. Get those last hits. Get that gold earned up. Pick up the items. And once you've got your items, then decide to fight. And I feel like Double if could decide to fight pretty soon now. The Blade of the Ruined King is a good power spike for Vayne. And if he gets the right fight, he's going to be able to go in for it. That was not the right fight, as he was thinking about it there. Nocturne might come in for Cop here if they get the taunt. So the taunt go? does land. Cop's going to be able to get invisible in just a second and going to be able to back away. He's actually decided to turn aggressive turn. in the end. This is going to work. Paranoia throws big at Fell beyond Cop. He flashes away from the Duskbringer, but flash burned. Yeah, I think overall that's good for COG as long as they don't let this burn. As long as... They don't fight until Big Fat LP's ultimate is up again. That, by the way, is going to be a while. They got 140 seconds, but that means the next time Big Fat LP gets an ultimate on a cop, they would be able to kill him. Got to wait a while, though. Got to wait a while. Something that we've been doing all game long. We're approaching the 20 minute mark, and three to one as far as kills are concerned. Both teams just expressing a comfort in lasting and auto attacking. Oh, cop is no. going to be super sneaky. He snuck himself away, and he manages to dodge the Dustbringer, not even revealed by his opponents. Oracle's very important right now. It's pretty cute. The taunt, if Nian would have hit it, that would have granted them the kill. But you are just playing a straight guessing game at that point. And Cop guessed better. He guessed correctly. That's what works out in your favor. He's still 55 CS behind his direct opposite number. And we'll see once that starts to actually transition to items. Because as it stands, they're actually both even as far as the itemization is concerned. And it's obviously thanks to kill and the assists. Right now, CLG grouping up. They want to contest for this blue buff. And this blue buff will transition into a dragon contest as well. The interesting thing here is that Nien is in this fight. There's no threat for him to teleport down. So this is a 4v4 through and through. The Shockwave pulls Chouster and Nien back as St. Vicious locks them down with the Cataclysm. First one to fall is Chouster on Lulu. Now Nien Tons is trying to get to safety. He flashes out. Command attack into dissonance slows them down. They expunge damage from Twitch. That's a knockout nice onto knockout. Double Lift. The bubble misses those. Double Lift steps back into the fight. The pressure is still on as St. Vicious wants to get the kill on Bigfoot LP. Gets a small slow from the Aegis. Decides to back away at the right point. Another three kills for Curse. That was a little one-sided in that fight right there because Curse got the clean initiation and they're taking control of the entire map here. Link's going to try to spike this blue buff out, but it's bit of his ultimate. That's interesting. Knocks away Voiboy thanks to that explosive cask. And that's the second time we've seen CLG make a play on an objective and lose three members of their team. Same thing yeah. happened to Dragon and it happened to Blue again. I want to analyze that fight a little bit because CLG put themselves in the jungle choke when they didn't have their biggest AoE damage dealer with the team. Link was up top in that fight and the way Curse funneled down through the middle would have been ideal if Link was there as Gragas, but it was a 4v4 without CLG's main carry, which is why Curse just rolled through CLG in that fight. So you see Curse, they managed to pick up the Dragon uncontested by CLG. They got some vision, but thanks to the fact that they'd been bullied out of their positions earlier on, that was a second dragon of the game secured for Curse and extends their gold lead to about 3,000, give or take. Death cap completed for Nijack. He plus that Athenians and Holy Grail. He is very scary right now. And that puts CLG in an even more difficult predicament right here because, yes, CLG's saying, all right, we're going to farm up, we're going to play our game, and then when we get late game, we're going to win the team fights. But they've lost these first two team fights so convincingly, you begin to question if they can win the team fights. Nien is gonna wanna be split pushing. Doublelift has admitted that Vayne is actually better in small fights and not in team fights, specifically when Nijaki has that giant death cap and quickly growing ability power already at 301. You let anything like that in your double and you're gonna take him out of the fight. So this game became substantially more difficult for COG as they lost those two team fights to Curse. There is a lot of pressure on Nijaki to make sure those Shockwave lands, if they are mitigated or avoided by their opponents, it could cost Curse's team fight power and potential. In terms of gold though, Cop actually has the gold lead over double lift right now. He's about 100 ahead. Thanks to those kills, thanks to the tower, thanks to the dragon. Everything is just adding up. That's made up for that very difficult early game that he was experiencing. And he's done a really good job since he started playing with Edward here in the mid-season of picking up the kills in team fights as opposed to last season where he was mainly just picking up assists. And I think the real story for Curse is Nijaki though because we mentioned that yes, Kopp is ahead of Doublelift and Gold, but Nijaki 
is a thousand gold ahead of Kopp. And I think the Orianna is the real threat for Curse right now. We'll see how well it actually works out for them because something we haven't actually seen from Curse either is Boy Boy's involvement in an extended team fight. These mm -hmm. 4v4 skirmishes were both without him, and Zach offers a lot of team fight power, especially with that Sunfire cape built up already. I think that's kind of Boy Boy's game. When Curse is playing well, Boy Boy's doing his thing and comes to fights when he pleases. So he's just <laughs> playing his game up top, confident against Yen. Saint, if anyone, will go up and help him, but for the most part, He'll come in late in the team fights. So you see, continues trading with Nian back and forth, just using the respective sustain to try and stay alive as much as possible. Double lift and Shouster have got a decent ring of vision down in the bottom half of the map, and they're putting some good damage onto this inner turret in the bottom lane without reply from Curse just yet. It's so strange how COG is actually dictating the map despite losing all the team fights. Curse is a little hesitant to pull the trigger and go for these fights because they don't want to throw away their good kill score. The danger Curse runs right now is since they have so many kills and they're getting pushed back, as soon as they lose one fight, they lose complete control of the game because the shutdown bonuses will come back to CLG and slingshot CLG into the lead. We'll see how well Curse can maintain this pressure or control it at the very least because CLG, as you said, they're dictating the tempo of this map control. It hasn't worked for them yet. They've tried no. to make plays thanks to the control that they've gained, but maybe poor decision making. Up in the top lane, the tower does drop, so that is a reply kill, and that means Void Boy will just have even more breathing room up top there. He likes it like that too. He just loves doing his own thing. You can see how they don't even have much ward control for Void Boy up there. Void Boy has to provide his own ward control. He goes in, wards a blue buff, just says, This half of the map is mine, and I'm going to go and deal with it. Something we also have to highlight in terms of at least as far as the CS is concerned. Big Fat LP, he hasn't been as present in ganks or in lanes, mm. even though this is an extremely extended laning phase, but he's still 30 or so CS behind his opposite number. Big Fat LP's been trying to find opportunities, but maybe ha at, at the cost of farming as well. And he just hit level 11, which means he's been working with his max cooldown ultimate this entire time. Finally, he's gotten a little bit more cooldown reduction on his paranoia, so he can maybe get involved a bit more. But that CS discrepancy is not going to change for CLG. At this point in the game, Big Fat OB doesn't farm anymore. You can notice how the rest of CLG will generally take his jungle for him. Maybe they'll give him a little bit until he gets his Aegis, but that is not the way CLG plays. It's a scary proposition. Big Fat LP diving into a team fight without any big items completed. If he jumps into an Orianna Zac Twitch combo without at least an Aegis of the Legion or something to help keep him alive, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Intan to stand united to be that dive buddy and make all the distractions work for them. You see, once again, him actually picking up those double golems as Link is going to pick up his blue buff. We hit the 25 minute mark. Dragon is about to respawn. Previous one went to Curse, one before that went to Curse as well, thanks to some play, and we'll see if they're going to secure the third at the end. This game's getting very interesting, Quick Shot. I have to say... It's going to be one of those games where one team fight's going to win it. Like, we're going to hit 35 minutes, yeah. one team will win, and then they'll just finish the game. Potentially. The thing here that I see for CLG, and I'm actually talking about CLG a little bit more because they're actually the ones that are pushed up in this game, despite having that big gold deficit, which is growing and growing. Doublelift does have better completed items. You think about Vayne's... Blade of the Rune King, Phantom Dancer combo. And that's exactly what he needs in these team fights, but I don't think he's gonna be unlocked to pull off that in any type of extended team fight because Curse isn't they're not allowing any of these team fights to happen. Another reason Curse is winning these team fights so one-sidedly is they're only taking the very best team fights. They're not extending themselves for any risk. And against CLG, that's a very risky strategy, not taking risk, because they're gonna get to hyper late game, and that's usually where CLG thrives. We'll see how well both of these teams do at that hyper late game because we're halfway there already. Both teams have got champions that do scale respectively well, but in obviously excel in different areas. One thing you can't discount is Cops team fight prowess. If we do see another big 4v4, 5v5, he's getting very close to getting that Infinity Edge completed. But look at this. We're not seeing much conflict anyway because Doublelift has already initiated the split push game. He's top lane trying to take the second turret while CLG completely concedes the dragon to Curse. So Curse is going to extend that gold lead even further and they'll be saying, hey, we won a game two weeks ago against this CLG team that was split pushing just like this. All we had to do was group up as five and push a single lane down. And you have to figure at what point does Curse start talking about that? At what signal is it to go in? I think it's pretty soon. I think as soon as they can get 
something around double lift or a window where they have a five-man fight that they can initiate on, they're just going to go for it. They're only down one turret, and they know they have a large item and gold advantage. Look at the items as well. I mean, uh, Edward down as in that support role. Ooh, St. Vicious trying to set something up. Singshot gets charged. He locks Link in. Link forced to flash away, but that is the flash down. Expense of only the Cataclysm for Curse, so not too bad at the end of the day. And this is almost a carbon copy of what we saw last week because CLG is split pushing two different lanes right now with Yen and Double Lift, whereas Curse is pushing right up the middle lane to a limited defense from CLG. So they even up the towers at three to three. Zhi Chowster and Double Lift, they're up in that top lane pushing. And Tonso is down in this bottom lane. He's trying to split push. Curse have backed away and split up. They've left their duo lane in the mid lane, trying to catch out Link. Link is taking a lot of damage. The bubble lands. That's going to be a dead hill, Billy. And Cop picks up a kill. It's one of the reasons they pick Nami so early on in the game, because he can just lock Link down when he can't escape on Gragas. Cop and Edward buddying up there. You can see seven assists for Edward. He's setting up all the kills. Cop has been involved in six of them. Those two have been the most active on the map right now, and they're the reason Curse is up seven kills to one. Secret agent level statistics as far as Edward is concerned. Pulling out the James Bond numbers, and that was good. when we see Cop has just secured himself an Infinity Edge and that Zeal. So now, as far as itemization is concerned, in theory, is that enough to crest the power lift that, that the power that position that double lift is in? I absolutely think it is. I think that's kind of the break point right now for Cop, since he's gotten his crit chance really ticking with the Infinity Edge. He's going to be ripping through a lot of them CLG members. When we also look that Big Fat OP, who's one of the two people who needs to kind of be tasked with going on cop, doesn't have armor yet. He's going for a runic bulwark, and he's sitting on 107 armor. Just, that's not enough to protect you from what cop is putting out. And we'll see how quickly cop can tear through his opponents if he's given the chance. It does look like they're trying to set up that opportunity as Curse have stacked up five members in this mid lane, trying to apply pressure onto this bottom mid lane turret, or mid lane inner turret. That's the words I'm looking for. While we see Double of continues foot pushing. CLG is daring Curse to do something very aggressive right here. Nocturne hasn't showed yet. As soon as Big Fat OP shows to push this turret, Curse either has to go back or dive right away. The tower is going to drop. That's the fourth tower of the game for CLG. Curse continues the pressure. They've stacked up in this mid lane. They're in control of this lane, but Double Lift and Big Fat LP, they're going on the bot lane. It looks like St. Vicious and Boy Boy are trying to back away. There's just as many turret kills in this game as there are player kills right now, and CLG looks like they're getting the edge. So Curse not caught with their pants down. They're going to lose inhibitor turret first. They're trying to back away in this mid lane. The tower's going to drop as St. Vicious has managed to, you know, get in there, but he's going to be very, very careful. He wants to try pick a fight. Yeah, Curse needs to catch double lift right here and they are trying to flank from all angles to shut them down here. CLG is going to try to push turrets as a response but here we go. The slingshot gets pulled. Let's bounce. Sand United gets channeled. Nintonson Thompson wants to join and this party will be thrown off the air. The taunt goes out. Boy Boy's caught down. They jump down to cop. Barrier has been popped. The first one to fall is double lift and cop flashes Beautiful over flash. the wall. Uses the immense range of that spray and pray to his advantage. He gets dropped by Chouster in the background though as he gets shut down. is going to do the best he can to survive but it's not going to be enough. A three Three for one trade, another team fight win for Curse. Listen, even though Cop died in that fight, that was played beautifully. He went right on to Double Lift, who was the priority target, and then the flash over the wall was so perfect in that fight to finish it off for Curse. That was a bad thing that happened to Curse, but it was a good fight that they were able to take on afterwards. And if they can counter push and get an inhibitor turn and an inhibitor back, it will all become worth it. There is so much pressure on Nocturne and Gragas right now to try and wave clear with the respective champion's abilities. We actually seen blue pings on the bottom lane inhibitor. CLG simply reasoning they, they can't pull that one off. Double lift has respawned, so the tower will go down. We have two naked inhibitors for both teams right now, and the split push power is still going to be something to deal with. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see an end to the split push game, especially now that we have exposed inhibitors. I think we're going to see quicker responses by teams and more wards in the jungles. Curse didn't have anything warded up in their jungle, and that's one of the big reasons, or even their lanes, when Big Fat LP was able to sneak up and help Doublelift create that push. Once we have more vision control, even with the globals potentially from Yen, it's going to enhance that gameplay and allow Curse to play a little bit more smartly defensive. We'll see how well they can play defensive. They've been doing it all game long, and simply put, they've been reacting to their opponent's plays. Curse have actually not been playmakers in this no. game. It's all been objective pushes from CLG that Curse has responded to and dealt with incredibly effectively. They've only lost two of their members in team fights. As far as itemization is concerned, Nijaki's got that voice stock completed. He's getting very scary.
And he is the, the secret weapon right here because everyone's thinking about Cop right now, but not the seven or 800 health shields that Nijak is going to be putting in or the shockwaves that take half of COG's health. But to get back to this game a little bit, Curse has had a few games in the past that they've won where they haven't needed to play that initiator role. They just kind of sit around and react to the other team. It actually seems to be a more comforting level of play for Curse. And now they may have COG right where they want him. No one split pushing, 5v5 in the base. We'll see how well this goes. There's a couple of hits down onto the inhibitor. If Fidelpi's gonna get the fear proc and the same Vicious, but he's gonna be able to speak through that horror. Doesn't get locked down by the crowd control. There's not too much hard CC outside of maybe the slow from Lulu and a taunt from Shen. They continue applying pressure to this inhibitor, and it's it's just this this stand of this duel as both teams look for an opportunity. Link needs to land a lot of spells on a cop for COG to win a fight here. It'll be very interesting to see how COG goes in and how zoned Link gets by the tank line of Curse. Curse on St. Vicious does get feared by Big Fat LP, but he's down to 50% HP, so that Paranoia Nocturne dive is less scary. Inhibitor's gonna go down, and CLG, they tried to contest, but they, they weren't convicted convinced with their, their actions. Yeah, they didn't try very hard to contest that one. They were thinking that they would lose a fight right there if they tried to contest the inhibitor, so they just gave it up. But that doesn't bode well for the future of COG. If they can't initiate on a team who is trapped in a position of hitting their inhibitor, they're going to have a bad time. And they have to know the curse would have fallen back for this Baron. It's going down extremely fast. No contest from COG. And now they've given up two very important objectives in the game because they didn't want to risk defending them. More indecision. They they wanted to contest, they wanted to get there, but they simply couldn't make it there quickly enough. And I think mm -hmm. that stalling in time and the slowdown in do we go, do we not go, may have actually cost them all the time they needed. We do see Double Up trying to counter push the super minions in the mid lane. Ironically, he's actually gonna take the tower lead for CLG while their inhibitor's down. Six to five, they're still in a very uncomfortable position. Yeah, right now, kills are leading turrets 12 to 11 right now in this game. <laughs> it's going to be a close finish. We'll see who wins it. But that was a situation where Curse almost lulled CLG into a sense of security, since, as you were mentioning, Curse had been playing reactively the entire game, and they kind of just took the reins in that last situation, took the inhibitor, went straight to Baron, and said, yeah, we just decided to win now. Let's go get the things. They found the let's win button last week, or week before last, and... It looks like they're trying to press the same button this week. They've got that inhibitor down. They've dealt with double lift split pushing. It's really only been him that's been able to successfully split push. Nintanso Sheen hasn't had the the map presence that we've no. actually seen out of him in the past with the split pushing Sheen. He's not that threatening to Voy Boy Zach, and that's who they're generally sending to stop him. So it's it's just a traded member of teams and since the 4v4 is also stronger for Curse when you take out Voy Boy and Yen. He's just not a threat. And COG in the past has also been the ones who just want to split push with Double Lift because that's the way they get primary farm late game for him. Curse has found a really good workaround. Definitely a, a talking point for CLG, whether or not this, the composition they've built works with split pushing. It's something they'll mm -hmm. be talking about. It's right now, Curse have stacked up. The slingshot has been charged. Boy Boy does not pull the trigger on this one and Cops can take out the tower. And this could be game deciding, whether or not Curse can get this second inhibitor, because the gold lead is actually small when we think about the context of the game. 5,000 gold in 35 minutes is not that much. So if CLG can outlast Baron buff, going in seems super dangerous. What Paranoia is this? with United, that's Nian and Big Fat, now in the middle of the team. Come on, attack goes down, the shockwave only pulls Big Fat LP, he's forced to flash out of safety. Boy Boy and St. Fish are taking on four members of CLG, they're gonna pick up the first kill onto Nian. They managed to get the expunge kill done into Chalster, and now the rest of Curse will stack up on this bottom lane inhibitor turret. That was all too easy for them. That is not the play that COG needed to make right now. They initiated onto a Baron team who wasn't even sieging the turret yet. It allows Curse to play completely reactively, and this may lose COG their entire base. Second inhibitor gets dropped. That's the seventh tower of the game. It has now, I think, overtaken kills as far as that's concerned. 13 to 12 or 14. Curse are gonna roll to this top lane. They're gonna drop this top inner turret down and then try to put pressure on the, the inhibitor. But we have to think now, CLG used all their ultimates in that last fight, aside from double lift's ultimate on Vayne. They have no strong disengage or engage for this fight. There's still 10 seconds left on the Gragas ultimate. This could be the, the triple inhibitor push by Curse. So the dude managed to get the tower down. They've stacked up as five. Shockwave will be available very, very shortly. And Nijaki Wally only hit Big Fat LP in the previous fight. It's a little bit tighter quarters here for CLG to defend. Hibbert has dropped down to 50% HP and Curse. It's just a matter of time. Minions are in. 
We'll see how close can Cop get. 6-1-5 on that Twitch. He's in a very powerful position. This Baron buff still has 45 seconds left for Curse, so COG can't exactly expect to win a fight against it. I expect this inhibitor to go down, or COG to lose a team fight trying to stop them. There's the tank line of St. Vicious and Boy Boy up in the front line, trying to buy breathing room for Cop. He's stealthed up, gonna get that attack speed increase. He's on the inhibitor. Two or three more attacks should be enough to do it. Boy Boy's gonna get the slowdown. Ooh. That's a three-man knockup from St. Vicious. The Shockwave pulls Big Fat LP in double effect. Double lift is destroyed. Bitfight LP follows suit. Now the Wild Ghost throws it up in the air as they get the inhibitor to down. Spray and Prey is being used, and that's a Goomba stomp onto Chalster as the Slingshot lands down. Boy Boy decimating them in the front line, 15 to two. Curse of victorious, well played. And even though it took them 37 and a half minutes, they pressed the win button at some point and just decided to move into the base. CLG kept taking fights that they couldn't win, and Curse, they are take that one. They needed this win. Curse were in complete control throughout their matchup. Every mm -hmm. time CLG made a play,